Despite their rich history and iconic brands, companies like Volkswagen, BMW, and Mercedes-Benz are facing some serious challenges. From economic woes and regulatory hurdles to fierce competition from more flexible and innovative rivals, there's a lot of shaking up in the auto industry. Stick around as we explore what's going wrong for these automotive titans and what they need to do to get back in the game. Welcome to why Europe's big seven are struggling. Let's get into it. The Decline from the Throne As the European car market continues to evolve, thanks to the Tesla boom and the influx of Chinese brands, the landscape for traditional segment leaders has seen significant shifts. Europe is inherently a fiercely competitive market, known for its stringent safety and emissions standards. It holds its ground as the third largest car market in the world, trailing only China and the United States. Europe is also a leader in the adoption of electric vehicles, second only to China. In the last 20 years, the European market has been a battleground for both established giants and new challengers. For instance, Tesla has revolutionized the market with its sleek, high-performance electric cars, leading to a surge in EV sales and pushing traditional manufacturers to innovate rapidly. European giants like Volkswagen, BMW, and Mercedes-Benz have been forced to pivot and invest invest heavily in their electric vehicle lineups to keep up. Meanwhile, Chinese brands like Neo, Bid, and Xpeng are making their presence felt. They're not just competing on price, but also on technology and features, giving European consumers more options and intensifying the competition. This influx is shaking up the market dynamics, challenging long-standing leaders to rethink their strategies. Traditional segment leaders have had mixed fortunes. Volkswagen has managed to maintain a strong foothold by heavily investing in EVs and launching successful models like the ID3 and ID4. On the other hand, brands that were slower to adapt like Fiat and Pigo have struggled to keep pace with the rapid changes and consumer demands for greener alternatives. Big 7 is shrinking? Let's talk about what's been happening in the European automotive market from 2003 to 2023. One of the most significant changes has been the brand dominance. Traditionally, Europe has been ruled by seven major automakers. Fiat from Italy, Citeron, Pigo, and Renault from France, Volkswagen and Opel from Germany, and the UK-based plant of Ford besides the US headquarters. Back in 2003, these seven giants controlled almost 58% of new car registrations across Europe's 29 markets. These brands have always had a stronghold in their home countries, giving them a solid edge over Japanese and Korean competitors. Their deep-rooted presence in Europe made them household names, and their cars were the default choice for many. But things started to shift over the years. While these big brands were once untouchable competition from Japanese and Korean manufacturers like Toyota, Honda, Honda, Day and Kia began to heat up. They brought in innovative designs, reliable performance, and often more affordable pricing, which started to win over European consumers. Moreover, the push for greener, more sustainable vehicles has been a game changer. Brands like Tesla with their electric cars have entered the market and shaken things up even more. European giants have had to adapt quickly and keep up with the demand for electric and hybrid vehicles. By 2023, the market landscape looked quite different. The dominance of the traditional 7 had waned and their collective market share dipping as they struggled to fend off the rising popularity of these newer players. It's a classic tale of adaptation and survival in a rapidly changing market. In short, the European automotive market has seen a dramatic shift over the past two decades. While the traditional big brands are still major players, they've had to innovate and compete harder than ever before to maintain their status in an increasingly crowded and competitive field. Diminishing Returns All right, let's break it down. Back in the day, car brands like Opel and Renault were pretty big in their home countries. For example, Opel snagged a 10% market share in Germany, while Renault grabbed a solid 27% in France. These numbers might seem a bit low compared to the glory days of the 1990s, but there's more to the story. Korean brands like Hyundai and Kia started gaining traction, 
offering affordable and reliable options that caught consumers' eyes. Japanese brands, such as Toyota and Honda, also stepped up their game with innovations and reliable vehicles, making the competition even tougher. So while Opel's and Renault's market shares might have dipped from their peak, they still held their ground pretty well considering the new competition. Plus, the car market overall was getting more crowded with more choices for consumers, which naturally spread out market shares a bit thinner. For instance, Hyundai's rise in Europe has been impressive. According to the European Automobile Manufacturers Association, Hyundai's market share in Europe had steadily increased, reflecting the brand's growing popularity. Similarly, Toyota has consistently been one of the top non-European brands in terms of sales, showcasing its strong foothold in the market. In summary, even though Opel and Renault didn't dominate like they used to, holding on to significant portions of their home markets amidst rising global competition was quite an achievement. SUVs on rise. The SUV boom really started to shake things up, and it all kicked off with the first generation Nissan Quash Quai. This was the turning point when people began to ditch their old sedans and hatchbacks for these new versatile SUVs. Meanwhile, Hyundai and Kia were busy making their mark by setting up factories in the Czech Republic and Slovakia. This move helped them produce cars that really resonated with European drivers, offering competitive options that met local tastes and needs. So. What happened next? By 2013, the so-called Big 7 car brands were feeling the heat. Their share of the European market had dropped to about 49%, which was a significant decline from where they were a decade earlier. Between 2003 and 2013, six of these brands saw their market shares fall quite a bit. Fiat, for instance, only lost about 0.9 points, but Renault took a bigger hit, losing around four points. Volkswagen was the only one who bucked the trend, actually growing its market share from 9.8% in 2003 to 12.6% in 2013. Fast forward to June 2023, and the situation had gotten even more challenging for some of these brands. Fiat, Citroën, Opel, Vauxhall, Ford, and Pugo hit their lowest market shares in 20 years. Renault did see a slight improvement, gaining 0.2 points from 2022, but it was still struggling compared to its past performance. On the flip side, Volkswagen managed to hold its ground pretty well, even though its market share dropped two points since 2013, sitting at 10.6% in the first half of 2023, it was still up 0.8 points compared to 2003. This resilience came despite the Dieselgate scandal, which could have severely damaged their reputation. Instead, VW's focus on producing high-quality cars and strategically launching new models in the right segments at the right times helped them maintain their strong position in the market. Who's leading the race? Over the past 20 years, several car brands have really pulled ahead, and it's interesting to see who's come out on top. The big winners are the German premium brands like BMW and Mercedes-Benz, along with Toyota, Hyundai, and Kia, and most recently, Tesla. So what sets these brands apart from their European counterparts? One of their major advantages is greater flexibility. These companies are able to roll out fresh, innovative products at a much faster pace, which means they can quickly respond to the latest consumer trends and demands. For instance, Tesla's rapid advancements in electric vehicle technology have set a new standard in the industry. Moreover, these brands weren't as heavily impacted by the European economic crisis that hit hard between 2011 and 2014. Their strong global presence allowed them to mitigate costs and spread their risks more effectively. Toyota, for instance, leveraged its massive global market to maintain stability and growth during this period. In contrast, many big European brands struggled during this time, partly due to their heavier reliance on the European market. Brands like Volkswagen faced significant challenges, including regulatory issues and market saturation in Europe. So that was the video. Will the struggling European giants take note of these strategies? Will the EV trend continue to affect the big seven? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video, comment down what you want to see next, and share this video. Subscribe to the channel for more informative videos like this. Peace out.